service of the Gilfield Baptist Church. Give the Lord a hand of praise as we celebrate who God is to all of us. We thank God for 
the opportunity to assemble in person and online. We thank God for blessing us all week long. Amen. 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 If you'd like to connect with us more, we're so happy to get in touch with you after worship is over, so you can call us at 804-895-0213. If you'd like to support this ministry with an offering of any amount, text us at 73256 and key in the message, GBC Give. Are there any first-time visitors present with us this morning? If so, raise your hand so we can give you a hearty welcome. All right, we've got a first-time visitor. Thank you so much. We're delighted to have you share with us today. And certainly those who are joining us online, just type in the chat box, first-timer. We certainly want to connect with you. Are there any anniversary celebrants, any wedding anniversary celebrants this month, any January wedding anniversary celebrants, any January birthday celebrants, wave your hand. Amen. We, we say happy birthday Eloise, Kevin, Chauncey, Gwen, Reagan, Margaret, Tricia, Evelyn, Sarah, Faith, Paris, Troy, Denaja, Bessie, Jean, Tony, CJ, and Corrine. Give the Lord a hand of praise for all of our January birthday babies, and most especially to you, God's beloved. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to assemble in this place and to remember the gracious gift and the sacrifice of that gift, Jesus, who washes away all of our sin, that we might stand in your presence boldly and as members of God's family. Thank you, O Lord, for meeting us in this place. Hear our prayers. Receive our praise, and oh God, send us a word from heaven that we might know exactly what we are to do. Touch some heart today in advance that they might commit their heart to you, whether they're in person or online, and we give your name praise in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hear now the words of scripture. In preparation for the pastor's message today, Today's scripture is found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, verses 18 through 20. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be found or will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Amen. The word of God for the people of God, all praise belong to God.
He is wonderful, isn't he? He is wonderful. And if you haven't experienced his wonderfulness, just think back all week long. Last Sunday, he was wonderful. Monday, he was wonderful. Tuesday, Wednesday, he was wonderful. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, he was wonderful to you. so many things, but he is wonderful. He is wonderful. Amen. I want to call your attention to that passage previously read and I hearing the 20th verse of Matthew chapter 18. Jesus says these words, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. I want to tag this text because he's here. Shall we pray? And now, O God, let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Because he's here. This passage of scripture deals with uh, the final uh, teachings of Jesus to his people and he leads them through some discussion. He talks about what happens when there is a, uh, an outburst of transgression and sin in the midst. He talks about how to reclaim those who are repentant. He talks about how to embrace those who have been restored because they've repented, they've turned away deals with how to handle people who want to stay right in their own eyes. Uh, then he shares with them some things about connecting with the divine. He tells them that if uh, you two of my followers agree to something on earth, then I guarantee it will be agreed upon in heaven. And if you two touch and agree on anything, you, you, you have access to that. Uh, we, don't, we don't quite understand that because in today's world, we have so many competing interests. We want what we want. But this is a word to those who want what the Lord has destined for them. Uh, this does not work because you can get what you want and win the lottery, get what you want and get that uh, relationship, get what you want, and drive off the lot with that new automobile. No, it is about wanting and connecting your journey with the journey that the Lord has set for you. Uh, it, it means that you're not going to find recourse in the judiciary system. 
You're not going to expect the legislature to draft a law that gives you what you want. It is what you will find in the realm of the spiritual. Uh, there is a promise in this 20th verse of the Lord's presence, uh, a promise that you can count on to have the Lord's presence in worship using his authority. See, it, 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 it's, it's not like it being given uh, the cash card to do whatever you want, but it's given the access and authority in the domain that God has already prepared for us. Uh, that's why I'm concerned that we uh, are concerned Monday through Saturday about whether or not we will assemble in the meeting place and assemble as God's children. The reason I say that in today's world because we, we have such competing and compelling interests. I mean, after all, where else are we going to gather for 50 minutes uh, masked and physically separated, mandated upon entry, uh, and be as safe as we are when we go to the, you know, to the shopping club, as we are in line at the bank, when we go to purchase our groceries. And I don't want to duly alarm, unduly alarm you, but it's not just the high price of gasoline that is alarming and concerning. It's how many hands have touched that fuel pump. Amen, when you get back in your car. Uh, we, we, we apologize to everybody we used to laugh at who would go to the pump before the pandemic with a glove on. Yeah, we, we apologize to you because we understand now. We didn't understand what you were talking about at first. But, 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 but then we, we move to a place where we get kind of disconnected and concerned when it comes to the spiritual filling station for our souls. And I tell you, for the last almost 24 months, we have been beaten up spiritually. Our souls have been denied so many warm and loving opportunities. We have been denied the access of embrace. We, we cannot greet each other with a literal holy kiss. We gotta send a kiss emoji. Uh, we, we cannot go in and out of each other's homes as freely as we once could uh, before the pandemic, no matter what the arrangements or the conditions were when we got there. Yeah, we, we, we probably have saved ourselves some contamination, help me somebody, but uh, by, by not going in, but there was a time when it didn't matter how contaminated it was, we were gonna go in and enjoy. Fellow, our souls have been disconnected, and oh, don't, don't, I, I pity all of you who are new grandparents, because now you can only see the picture or see the image on a screen. You can't hold the baby, and I don't suggest that you do. You, you follow whatever the, those parents have set in place. I got some buddies. They, 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 they will leave their pulpits. They will quarantine for the next four or five days so they can go see their grandbaby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so I, our souls have, have kind of taken a hit. But yet we go every place else to fulfill the needs of those entities and we forget how to nourish our soul. I mean, it's always been dangerous at night and in the daytime, at least in my neighborhood. It's always been dangerous because you don't know who's going to come out. It's always been dangerous to travel here and there. But, but when it comes to nourishing and feeding our soul, you know, the, the, that which keeps you afloat when life's floodwaters would drown you. Jesus gives here a promise. He says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in the midst. He says, I'll be there. And that, that's a promise you can count on if you gather in my name. And I would submit that some of us have gathered, but we don't always gather in his name. You don't gather in his name at the bank. You don't gather in his name at the conference meeting where you work. You don't gather in his name at the post office. You don't gather in his name at the grocery store. 
You don't gather in his name, watching, gather together, watching Georgia beat up on Alabama. I know. Yeah. Or, or the game get forfeited because Alabama. But, 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 but this is the place where you can gather in his name. That means, as the choir saying to us earlier, we've come into this house to magnify his name and to worship him. We spend 167 hours lifting up the name of the president. We spend 167 hours lifting up the name of the legislature. We spend 167 hours lifting up the name of the past president. We spend 167 hours talking about inflation. We spend 167 hours talking about disease and destruction and illness and barely one hour of the week focused on the Lord. So I want to submit to you, it's important that we gather in this place because the Bible lets us know he's here. And because he is here, and because I've got 167 hours in front of me that are uncertain, unsure, unsteadying, I want to make sure that I am armed and equipped with his authority so that I can make it through the week. And I don't assume that I'll make it through the week in life, but I don't. But, but death may come to some of us, and I don't want to be caught off guard and not have the power of His strength upholding me. Nobody wants to have death come to visit them, but we just don't know. Uh, we're happy for the strength that we have right now. That's one of the reasons why we worship Him. We tell Him thank you for the reasonable portion of health and strength that I have right now. And in case in 167 hours my condition changes. It will be on record that he gives me strength and when I'm too weak to give my and when I'm too weak to lift myself up he is the lifter of my head and so therefore we want to gather in this place under his authority and just tell him one more time Lord keep me day by day Lord provide for me Lord go before me and open the door so that when I knock and push the door open or turn the handle the door will open and I will enjoy the blessings that I could not achieve by myself. Lord I need you to provide what I do not have in my bank, in my billfold or in my checking account. Lord I need you to surround me with people when everybody else is socially uh, distant and physically distant and socially isolated from me when I'm in quarantine. I need you to be with me and this is the place under his authority where you ask him for it. So he says here, he, you, you got the promise of his presence in worship and you have the ability, the access to his authority. Let me tell you, the first thing you have is the fire of his word and the fire of his word warms us, warns us and is our witness. I can stop right there. It, 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 it first of all warms us. It's not just the cold temperatures around us, but there's some things that happen on the news. There are things that happen in our neighborhood. There are things that happen in our community that put a chill on us. It, it makes, you know, you've heard of compassion fatigue. Well, there's doing good fatigue and there's being a witness fatigue and there's being a faith person fatigue that you get tired when you see all the negative stories, all of the down and out stories, all of the depressing things that are happening each and every single day. Even while we're in worship, there are some things that they'll report about in tonight's news that will just bring down our spirits. There are some conversations that will take place just out Outside these doors after the benediction that will tear down and cool us off but the word of God is what warms us and what better way to warm us than to hear the promise of God's presence that where two or three are gathered I'll be in the midst now that's been an over 2,000 year old declaration, but somewhere along the line, the people of God felt that you weren't having church unless you had three or 4,000 packed into a sanctuary. You weren't having church if you didn't have 10 or 15,000 on the road. But then let a pandemic sweep where you live and demonstrate the word of God. The Lord says, where two or three have gathered in my name. What have we discovered? We've discovered that we didn't need 15,000, we didn't need 5,000, we didn't need 1,000. 
all we needed were two or three who understood the power and the presence of God, who understood the fire of God's word to warm us, who have been meditating on his word day and night. See, let me tell you what I've sa I learned sadly. Crowds don't study the Bible. Crowds don't know what God is doing because they don't read the Bible every single day. They don't read the Bible at night. They don't meditate on the Bible. But there are a faithful two or three in any congregation that study God's word, that understand what God is showing us, and that's where God says, I'll be in the midst. Yeah, yeah, because see, you got some skeptics. They don't believe the newspaper. They don't believe the news online. They don't believe cable news. And guess what? They ain't believe in the scriptures. But there are some people, just two or three, who understand the power of God. Can I ask you this question? Have you been warmed by God's fire this week? Then it also comes to warn us. It, it, it comes to warn us. You see, it tells us what's going to happen if we don't do certain things. And the Bible tells us what's going to happen if we do certain things. See, the reason why we study scripture the way we do it, Sunday school and Bible study and worship and any other time we assemble is so that we are warned by the experiences of those in Holy Writ, the Bible, and then we understand how that works through right now. Now, many of us get this confused, and so we say, well, well, I want to walk on water like Peter. Or, I want my loved one raised from the dead like Lazarus. And, and we, we misunderstand that those things happen in Scripture as a point of reference so that the people would believe who Jesus was in his day. Because Jesus was clear his assignment was not to always be in our midst. In, the, in, in physical form so that we would have only our faith to access him. Yeah, yeah, because he's here, you gotta access him by faith. And, and there's a warning, Hebrews, the Hebrews writer says, now don't do like some do and forsake the assembly of yourselves together. Because it is in the assembly where the promise is carried out if we understand that he's been warming us are trying to warm us by his word and warn us about not connecting to him and his word serves as a witness because as you study the scripture as you read it first you got to read it before you can say as you read it and then you study it then you understand that growth takes place when you identify with the God of scripture and the God in your life See, the reason studying is important is because, see, what you read doesn't always give you the backstory. That's why the pastor has been blessed to give you what it means so that you'll understand what you're reading when you go back and reread it again tomorrow and tomorrow night. So, therefore, you can identify how God has made a way for you out of no way. You might not have walked on water like the James River, but you have walked in some places where other people just knew you were going to fall. Whenever you have walked on in a place where people knew you were not going to succeed, you have walked on water. When they said, I doubt if they're going to make, make it here very long because of their gender, their race, their socioeconomic background. They're not as smart as everyone else here. But yet you have walked through those things and you, like Peter, have walked on water. Now, I know it's not literal water, but you have done something that they thought was impossible because they never saw anybody like you do that before. And so I got to gather in this place because he's here. His word is here. I got to witness that his word is real. See, it's not just reading that where two or three are gathered in his, in his, in, in his name. There I will be in the midst. It is I can testify that I have called on him with somebody else who understood and believed that his presence is so powerful that if he's in the situation, he can turn things around. When, when death comes, he can lift up your heart. When, when dissatisfaction comes, he can bring joy to you and he'll bring contentment to you. When nobody understands how you're able to do what you have done, I'm a witness that God takes the weak and makes them strong. He confounds smart folk with making dumb folk like us believe in his power and thereby he gets the glory. Yeah, because he's here, I want to connect with people who understand the power of his word. Then, then it's not just that the power of his word, 
But see, he says, where two or three are gathered together in my name. Where, where, where there's somebody else, not just who knows my, my word, his name, my word, but they are in agreement. That sounds like fellowship. See, fellowship is not just about creating a good time. Fellowship is being on one accord in him. That if you are connected in him, then we can disagree on who's going to win the game, but we can agree as to who's going to carry us to the victory line. We can disagree on the best way to bail out the economy, but we can agree that he has enough to supply when the economy of the nation runs out. It, 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 it is the one it, when, when we cannot access or medical science cannot do anything more for us. We know somebody who has given us a new body that will not need a doctor, that will not experience sickness or pain, and every single day we are nurturing that body. Fellowship is when I don't have to try to convince you of it, but you already know it. See, we spend a lot of time trying to argue with people about this faith. No, the reason we have fellowship is to experience with other people who already understood and experienced the same God. That's why we ought to get just and envious of each other when we succeed because if I know how long you've been praying that God will bless you in a certain manner of your life and God opens that door, God provides that blessing, I'm rejoicing because I'm a witness because I know how God has opened doors for me and if I'm waiting on God to open a door and I see that God has opened a door in your life, then I'm going to trust God more. I'm going to lean on God more because the witness is he a door opener and if I need a door open I, I'm going to ask God to open up the door because I can't do it by myself and I need to be around other people who understand and I ain't got to explain. I, 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 yeah, 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 we need to surround ourselves with people who are like minded with us when it comes to the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we, we deal with, we, we, when you watch the news and you see church folk on the news, don't, don't get sworn, uh, don't, don't, don't get uh, caught up in people who, who, who are talking about this on the news. I, I, wish, I wish they would have a moratorium on the news with church folk. So that I wish they would not interview on the news channel that you like to watch and I like to watch. I wish they wouldn't bring on any experts from the faith community. Because all they seem to find are the people who talk about what God is against. As if they were in the conference meeting drafting up the list of things that God is against versus the one thing that the Lord told us to do, love. They, they never talk about that. Doesn't say go tear up anything, it says build up with love. And, 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 so, and so we find reasons to fight at one another in the body of Christ. But fellowship is when we can agree that God is supreme. Fellowship is when we can agree that we can't do it, but the Lord can do it. The Lord can make a way. See, as members of his family, we hold on to hope. Yeah, we hold on to hope. We hold on to hope because we understand that there is hope in him. I need you to give me your attention right now. I need you to give that, that we have to hope in him. You're trying to figure out whether this party or that party has the answer to the questions that we have. No, my hope is not in the political party. My hope is not in those who make political statements about what should happen or what should not happen. I need you to focus right on, right on here through here. Right, those, those in person. I need you to look right, right, right through here. I need you to understand this because if your hope is in the next election, then you've wasted your time in here. If your hope is in the performance of the stock market tomorrow, then you wasted your time in here. See, this is the place where you say, now Lord, when I leave out of this place, there is hopelessness, but I don't want it to infect me. I wish some of us were as concerned about not losing hope as we're concerned about getting sick with the virus. 
Because see, if I lose hope, I'm getting ready to quit. But if I have hope, then I'm placing my faith. I'm activating my faith, and I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to put your faith in something or someone that has a spotty track record. He says, if you gather in my name, I'll be with you, and if I'm with you, then you can talk to me like you need to talk to me. And somebody in the house of the Lord needs to tell the Lord something, and you need to have your hope for firmly ready, uh, planted in the fact that God, if you don't do it, nobody else can. Lord, if you don't make a way, the way will not be made. Lord, if you don't lift me up, I won't get out of this condition. If you don't give me joy, I'll never see the sunlight again. But God, while you're in this place, and there are two or three who gather in your name, I know you can hear me, Lord. I need you to send me some hope. I need you to send me some healing. I need you to meet me in this holy place and consecrate me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I need to say what you need me to say. I need to think on what you need me to think about. I need to go where your, where your, your past has led me to go. And if you lead me, I'll be led in a holy place. I won't say the wrong thing. I won't do the wrong thing. I won't think the wrong thing. If you connect with me in this place. Yeah, we missed the moment. We missed the moment. So why then, Brother Pastor, are you so interested in us coming to church? Pandemic has discovered, has shown the church world that you don't need baskets to collect an offering. So if you think we're here because of an offering, think again. In, in fact, the, the statistics will probably bear out that it was not assembling that saw the greatest increase in the, you know, the tipping of the Lord. Uh, it's not because of an offering. Well, then there were those who said, before the pandemic come, you got to come here, you got to come here, our choir sing. Can't no choir sing like our choir. But then the pandemic hit. And 150, 200 voice choirs went down to one, two, or three. And now we're just as happy with two or three singing. We don't care what they sing as long as they sing something to glorify the Lord and get me through the week. Yeah, we, we've discovered that we gather in this place because this place represents something on our journey. It represents what we could not do by ourselves that collectively God allowed us to do. It allows us to be reminded that I'm not in this journey by myself. I got somebody I can call, text, tweet, or connect with on social media and say, child, pray for me. I'm going through a little something, I need your help. Do you know anybody who works downtown that's looking for somebody to hire? Do you, do you know somebody who can get, you, you have the opportunity now to just put in your little, your cash app signal and say, help, I need some money. Yeah, you, you, you have access and this place represents the place where when I was down, I found some pick me up and I didn't have to repent of it. When, when I was locked out, I found access to the throne of God and he heard my prayer. And when I did not know what I was going to do, when I didn't know which direction to turn, when I didn't know which way I wanted my life to go, I heard in his word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And when I've been in some dark places, I turned to his word and a light unto my pathway. Oh yeah, because he's here, I understand he wants to connect with me. See, you've been trying to connect with the wrong people. You've been trying to connect with folk next door and folk around town and folk across town. You've tried to be an influencer in social media, but I want to connect you and remind you that you have access to the influencer, and he's not just an influencer of them, he's an influencer for you. And if he is your influencer, he wants to tell you what to to do every day. He wants to guide you every day. He wants to assure you he hears you every day. He wants to let you know he's making a way for you every day. And so because he's here, I want to find my way here. Because he's here, I want to tell him how good he's been to me all week. Because he's here, I want to let him know that my hope is built on nothing less than his blood and righteousness. I will not trust anything else, but I'll wholly lean on his name. 
when I'm weak, I need you to give me strength because you are here. I'm going to go forward and face tomorrow because you are here. I want to let you know in the presence of a company that already has a faith in you how good you've been to me. And if they don't know or need to be reminded, they will hear it from me. He is a way out of nowhere. He is a bond builder. He is a heavy load sharer. He is worthy of my praise. And so because he's here, I'm going to find my way here. I may have to mask up, but I'm going to find my way to the house of the Lord. And even if we can't assemble in person, I'm going to keep my, my cell device charged up because I want to connect to him virtually. And don't, don't worry, don't worry, you who are watching and you in a room by yourself, just tell the nurse to, to kind of position the, your smart device a little bit closer to you because where two or three are gathered together in his name, and that's why we're here. We're in his name. We're not here to talk about what kind of car we drive. We're not here to talk about what we're going to spend the money on. We're not here to have a vote on anything. He's already Lord of Lords. He's already King of Kings. We're, we're, gonna, we're not going to waste time discovering who's holier or who's more righteous than the other. But we're going to use our time together. Let, let me count it. One, two. Yeah, that, that's two. And we've got a third party in our midst. We've got Jesus in our midst. See, if it, if it was the president, some people could, you know, they could care less about that. If it was the governor, they say, well, he's even office anyway. They could care less about that. If it was the senator, they say, well, I really don't know who you are anyway. But thank God it's Jesus in our midst. And, and, and Jesus is in our midst. He's a celebrity in our midst. He's a celebrity that knows us by name. He's a celebrity who's all in our business. Scripture says that he counts the very numbers of our, the very uh, hairs of our head are numbered by him. That's, that's how much he knows about it. And because it says one, two, he, he's in our midst. So what are you going to do now that you know that he's in your midst? Yeah, you, you need to tell him thank you. Yeah, you got a mask on, so nobody needs to know. Nobody needs to know or be worried about that, but you can tell him thank you through your mask. He, he can hear you. He can read your lips. He can read your heart. You need to tell him thank you for guiding me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me a member of your family. You need to tell the Lord thank you for guiding me when I didn't know which way I was going to turn. Thank you for lifting me. When situations held me down, thank you for guiding me and giving me joy when sad times are hit. Thank you for providing for me. Thank you for making a way. And if you have not uh, experienced what it means not to know, uh, if you've experienced, if you have not experienced that a way being made, just keep on living. And because there's one, two of us here, there might be a third person who doesn't believe. Just remember what we said in this place. God will. He will deliver you. God will protect you. God will give you a path for your life. God will give you a career. God will help you to understand what you can't understand now. God will provide the resources that you need. God will be with you when mama and daddy are gone. God will be with you when you're in between jobs. God will be your health when the doctor walks away. God will be your joy when sad times come into your life. Just remember it's a one, two. That's all you need in a witness in the old, old days was a on two credible people. Well, because I've been what I've been through and because you've been what you've been through, then you are credible to tell somebody how good God is, how great God is, how mighty God is. And if there's any other thing I can do in this place, I'm going to declare in this place. Y'all will look at me crazy in Kroger. Y'all will look at me crazy at the bank. But in this place, I can say thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for me. In this place, this is your place, Lord. And because this is yours, everything in here belongs to you. And most of all, I belong to you. And because I belong to you, I gotta trust you to do everything I cannot do. And what you've allowed me to do, I'm not gonna trust what I can do. But I'm going to trust what your authority says I can do. Gracious God, we love you and we give your name praise. We thank you, we bless your name for meeting us here. 
in this place where generations have assembled, where for years your name has been called in times of distress, praised when you've moved as only you can. So God, because you're here, we want to make sure that we declare it once again that you are the Lord of our lives. Because you're here, God, touch us and remind us again of your reality. Lord, because you're here, we don't have to go through anything or anybody. Just touch us right now. And let us know for ourselves that you're moving in our midst on our behalf that you're on our side. You're on our side. And God, we want to line up with your will. Thank you for the two or three. Lord, let me be in that number so that you can be light to my sisters or brothers around me. Be in our midst, oh God, so you can be provision for my sister or my brother who doesn't know literally where their next meal is coming from. Lord, I stand and ask that you will touch that troubled mind. The person who's discouraged. Lord, since you're here on your authority, I bind discouragement in the hearts and minds of our sisters and brothers. God, somebody came in here determined to give up. But God, I stand on your word. Don't let my sister, don't let my brother leave here discouraged and determined to quit. But place within them the determination to keep on going. I know you're able. I believe that you will. In Jesus' name, amen. The door of the church is open, and is there anybody who wants to give their life to the Lord? Now is the time to connect with him. If you want to be a member of this church family, now is the time. Just meet me right here on this front row to my right. Will you come? When the choir sings, you make up your mind.
the great sacrifice and love that was given to each of us, to the world. Bless these elements, but oh Lord, bless us to become more like you in everything we do, every thought we think, and every action that we take, every word we say. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, go in peace.